All right, welcome back to the channel, everybody. We're back at the Cutlass and it's day two of the respray. So we got our blocks, they came in. The big kid blocks are here. And these are some of the newest blocks out because they're very good because of the rigid uh, acrylic uh, straight surface on them. You know, these older blocks, a lot of times would have foam in them. And these are good in certain instances when these rigid ones won't flex. So some of these do flex. And uh, we're gonna get into blocking this car out today. So first thing we gotta do is clean it. And we gotta get all that wax off of this car because I have waxed this car, I've taken it to a lot of shows and there is a lot of wax on it. So we're gonna, we're gonna clean it. We're gonna get all this off of here. The bottom has that tar I showed you last time where those clips were on. We gotta get all that off. And I already went ahead and bagged the whole thing up. That way there's no dust that can get inside the car. All right, so let's go ahead and clean it and get it wiped down. That way we can get all this uh, wax off this car and we can start blocking it because you don't want to sand that wax into the sand scratches at all. So let's go ahead and clean it and then we'll start blocking. Make sure you guys wear gloves when you're doing this and make sure you're in a well ventilated area when you're doing this. I'm using a lacquer thinner on this and I recommend wearing a uh, respirator too. So <clears throat> gloves, respirator, and go ahead and get all this tar off of here. You guys know I showed you last time I had tar all around these bolts so that way it didn't rust. So let's go ahead and get this cleaned off and I'll show it to you when it's done. All right, guys, we got all that tar off of there and we're all cleaned up now on the rockers. So make sure you get that stuff off of there before you start sanding because you don't want to get that stuff stuck in any of the scratches. So wear gloves. These are real chemical resistant gloves and you can pick these up at any of the local hardware stores. These are really good. They won't rip from the lacquer thinner or any kind of a solvent or solvent proof and make sure you have the respirator on. So. We got this side all cleaned up. I'm going to go ahead and do the other side and then we'll get back on to uh, blocking. And this is a bigger job than it looks like because this guy had undercoating all underneath all the uh, wheel well trims. They were all undercoated. It helped it probably, you know, not rust, but. All right, guys, so here are the big kid blocks and they come in different lengths. And this is the uh, kit you buy, the initiation kit. Comes with a different uh, array of uh, styles with different rigid. This is a rigid block here, this green one, because it's got this full beam on it and it keeps it locked in straight. These do flex a little bit and the thinner ones flex even more, so they're good for different areas. So we're gonna go ahead and uh, grab one and see which one we wanna try out on this quarter panel. I'm thinking I'm gonna go with this here, this one. It's got a roundness to it. So we need a little bit of flex, but we wanna have it you know, straight. And that's what I like about these acrylic blocks. You don't have any give between the block and the sandpaper like most blocks have. And you know, those blocks are good when you need them, but when you're trying to get something straight, you definitely want something flat. So we're gonna start out with this block here. And this car, like I said, was already stripped at one time down to bare metal before this job here. So usually I would strip a car down the metal, epoxy prime it and do all my body work over the top of that. But I know this car has uh, been stripped already. So we don't need to do all that to this vehicle. And I'm glad because I'm not really looking forward to doing that kind of work to this car. I want to get this car done in and out and be back on the road running it again. So let's go ahead and try out this long one here and see how this one does. All right, I'm using 180 grit, sticky. And just go ahead and put it on the block like you normally would. And this is the first time I'm trying these blocks out. So you guys know I just picked them up. So we'll be trying them out together. and seeing what we think of them. So you just want to start out in an area. These are nice because they got these handles on them. 
and you can just go ahead and block. And that's the end of this paint job, so there's no turning back now. And we could already see it's doing a good job on it because see how that looks it's already uh, identifying the low areas that you can't see but with a block of this you know rigidness it's going to pick up every little spot and this area here is just a little bit lower than the rest of this car even though it's very hard to see this being laser straight like this is, is going to pick up all that. So that's what I'm hoping for with these blocks to get this thing like a laser. So let's go ahead and continue blocking on it. And one other key thing is you want to use a coarse grit. The coarser the grit, the straighter and the faster it'll sand it and the straighter it'll be. But you don't want to go in any coarser on a job like this than 180. That way I know I don't have any sand scratches coarser than 180 because the 180 grit is perfect for primer. So I won't have anything on this hopefully other than 180 grit. So I won't have any chance of sand scratches and being this car was done 20 years ago, everything is already settled nice. So this is basically gonna really make this car look awesome because everything is hardened up good. And uh, hopefully it won't settle because I'm using a 180 grit so far. Unless we find some areas we gotta fix, we're going to stick to 180. So let's go ahead and keep blocking it and see how it comes out. Blow it off and blow your paper off because with a rigid block like this, it's going to, it's going to collect more uh, sandpaper dust because there's nowhere for it to go. So you'll constantly want to blow and a lot of times you'll want to block it and blow it. I won't with this block because it's too big. I want to try out this longer rigid block and see how it works. Make sure when you block it, you do a cross pattern. You want to block it like this. This block here is really nice so far. You want to block it like this. And then you want to block it like this and cross hatch it. That way you get all areas. You want to go this way. You want to go this way, you want to go up and down, and that'll get you everything straight. So far, this one here is my favorite. This one here really works well. And I'll show you here in a second what I'm talking about with these blocks, how you can get something really, really straight. It'll take longer because you don't have that flex for that paper to lose that sanding dust. But when you're done, you'll have a really flat and straight surface. So see that there? Now you could barely see that when you were actually looking at this car, but that's how good of a job these blocks do. So we're going to keep on blocking and if you guys see this ring here, when I first picked up this car, I painted the quarters on this because it was a little spot up top that had a little bit of moisture and I did the tail end of the car. So that's what you're seeing here and we're going to go ahead and keep on blocking to get it straight. So, so far so good. The bid kick blocks are doing good and uh, this one here to me is so far the best block. The other one I'm not too in love with, the way the handles are, because I think the, the middle is giving out. But when you have a round surface, that would work really well. So let's go ahead and keep blocking this. All right, guys, so you can see what I was telling you how that block will really level it out. See this here? That's still a low spot because it's still shiny. And we're getting into the primer and the uh, 
base coat and stuff. So these blocks are gonna really be worth it in the long run. It's gonna take time to get this thing blocked out, but it takes time to get anything nice and I'm willing to do that. So this will be the biggest part of this job. We'll be blocking it because I don't want to DA it. I just want to block the car and get it straight. So you can see here a spot where being that this is the edge, it's a little higher here, factory, and it's just got a little dent. So when you put that block over the top of it and it's got that laser straight acrylic, there's no give. And it's like you guys know when you sand out a run, you want to have a block or the run file. It's hard, it's metal, and it just planes it off. And that's what this is doing. There's no flex at all in these blocks. So we're going to block the whole stripe off and make sure we get that all off of there nice and smooth because you don't want any lines because this is a painted stripe. So we got to make sure we get that all off and uh, there's no sign of it left when we prime it. Otherwise, we'll have to double prime it. And uh, when we do prime this one, we're gonna be looking over it real, real close to make sure we're laser straight. So I'm gonna try out this smaller block on the stripes now. This block here has a little bit of foam in it. And it works well inside this groove here. You don't want to have too much rigidness on some of these curves. You'll make lines in this uh, paint. So you got to switch blocks. You can't just use one way, one rigid block on it. So we're switching up. We got some. These are hard blocks with a little bit of foam in them. We've got these. This is the Norton. And we're using the big kid block. So with a combination of all these, a scotch Bright pad and a couple other ones, it'll uh, work well. So just don't stick to one thing because it won't work. You got to make sure you can get into these crevices in the right spot with the right angle on them or you're going to have a problem with it. So we're just blocking along. Right now, it's hard to see anything other than just dust and sanding and work. But this is what's key to this job coming out laser straight and looking the way we want it to. Especially when we put that kind of work with that paint job I plan on doing to this thing. You don't want to get to that stage of the job and say, oh man, I should have blocked it more. Because once you get to that point, it's too late. So take a little bit more time in the beginning and block it out really nice when you're doing a paint job or the body work don't rush right to the paint job because you're anxious to get it painted block it look at it if you got to reprime it prime it again but you want to block them and you want to use the da as least as possible on this part of the job here so i do use a da with a hook it pad to fine up the scratches sometimes when I'm doing the collision work and that's just knocking down some of the actual sand scratches of the block because like I was telling you the block leaves lines and with that soft pad it levels it all out so we're just blocking along so we'll get back to the camera in a minute let me uh, keep on blocking and I'll show you guys some more of this one it's all blocked out here guys see this area here I blocked it and it looks like it's got some good low spots in it so I'm gonna end up wiping this with some putty 
because I think they had these stripes here to kind of hide some of that wave in this area here. So there's actually a dinghy in it right there. And you couldn't see it with all the stripes going on. So I'm going to wipe this area here along this whole edge and we'll uh, go ahead and putty it. So you guys see that low spot on the edge of the door? You know, these doors here, they're not perfectly straight down low because these older cars weren't, but I'm gonna try to fix this a little bit here too with some putty, just to give it a smoother look. But the good thing is, <coughs> it's bare metal, no rust, and it's just the way these doors were made from the factory, so. All right, guys, I went ahead and wiped that section because I was telling you it had a lot of waves in it. Small dinghies and waves through the years of this car probably. That's why I think they put that stripe on it. So we'll wipe that spot and then I'm going to wipe the lower section of these doors to get rid of some of them waves down there. And because uh, the rest of the car isn't really wavy at all. These doors were the worst part of it. And once we get these tightened up, we'll be good to go. So like I told you when we started, you never know what you're gonna get into when you get into one of these jobs, but you gotta do it right. So we gotta do it the way that it needs to be done to be straight. So I'm not taking any chances. We're gonna be blocking it and uh, getting this thing straight no matter what we gotta do. So if we gotta do a whole new quarter panel or a new part, it'll happen. So let's go ahead and let this set up. We'll block this and then we'll putty the bottom of this. We're using the Platinum Plus finishing glaze. We're gonna go ahead and use now the long rigid block with 180, because this putty sands real easy. So let's go ahead and block this down and then we'll, we'll wipe the bottom of the door. All right, I went ahead and put a skim coat on the front edge of this door. It had a little low spot right here after blocking it. A lot of them do, and I hate that. When you look down one of these cars, you'll see that small dip meeting up to the uh, fender here. So I went ahead and skimmed that, skimmed the lower part of the door real tight, and that way it eliminates me having to uh, really go crazy with the primer. So I just put a nice thin wipe on the bottom there, and we're gonna block that with 180. Block this with 180, and that'll uh, straighten these doors out pretty close to being perfect. And then when we prime them, we'll be uh, pretty much right on the money. So let's go ahead and block this putty off. All right, we got two small dents on the fenders, and that'll be it for the putty work on this side of the car, so. Let's go ahead and finish wiping this last two dents. And then we'll be wrapping this side of the car up. A little more body work than I wanted to do, but we might as well do it while we can. Cause like I said, there's no coming back from it later. So this was just a small spot and that was just a small spot. So. Once we block this, we'll block that. That door is all done. This whole side's done. And we'll uh, be wrapping this thing up for today. But if I had to have one of these blocks out of all the whole pack, I'd go for this rigid green one. This one here seems to be the best one that I like. And uh, so far it's worked the best for me, so. Just my thoughts on it. You guys might like different ones, but this one to me is the best one so far. All right, so this whole side is done now. The body work's completely done. Quarter, the quarter's got no mud on it at all. It was just blocked. The fender's got a couple small spots, but this door has quite a bit of putty on it. So I decided I'm gonna go pick up some of that slick sand and I'm gonna put two coats of the slick sand on just the door. And then when I'm ready to prime the whole car, I'll block that door down and that will give me another, one more layer of blocking to make sure that that door is perfectly straight. So I'm going to grab that now, I'll be back and we're gonna put a coat, two coats of that slick sand on it 
because that's a polyester with a resin hardener and that stuff is really good. I used to use that when I did a lot of my restorations years back. So we'll put two coats of that on and uh, that'll give this some real good uh, adhesion and a lot of build to block one more time before we put the 2K on it. And you guys know what I'm putting on this, the P30 black guys. So we'll be able to see this car black even though we're not doing it in the black, we're gonna prime it in the black. And I'm not here, here gonna prime it today, but I'm gonna go ahead and put this uh, two coats of this slick sand on this door here. All right, guys, we made it over here now, and uh, we got this thing all taped up for the uh, high build polyester. So let me show it to you here. It's a super build four to one, and it has the actual activator like fiberglass. This stuff here is really good for stuff like this to seal this up nice and it'll give me a lot of build so I can put on a decent amount of coats, block it one more time off the car. Then I'll put it on the car and we'll prime that whole car with the black primer. So let's go ahead and uh, start putting some of this uh, high build on this and uh, get this thing all sealed up. And make sure you shake this stuff up really good if you have a shaker. And if you don't, make sure you mix it up really good because this stuff likes to settle because this is like a sprayable uh, putty almost. So let's mix this thing up. It's been a while since I actually mixed up some uh, paint over here with the shaker. So I forgot I had it actually. slick sand and it's the polyester uh, putty this one's a different name it's some other version of it but it's the same stuff one's two to one the slick sand I looked at was two to one and this is the four to one mix so just make sure you wear a mask when you're working with this stuff it's very very dangerous chemical it's uh, strong stuff but it'll leave a really nice finish almost like a gel coat to where we can block this door and make this thing laser straight. So you guys know that's the real reason I'm painting this car was to make it straight. So whatever we gotta do to get it straight, we're gonna do it. Now I got some uh, build here to block and we'll be uh, blocking this out with 180 and then priming it when we prime the body. And I'm gonna etch those spots when we get back to the house with a little etch primer if there's any bare metals just to uh, keep it treated while we're holding off on the prime. All right guys, so I hope you liked the uh, video two of the body work. We went ahead, we did the whole side of the car and it took a pretty much uh, a good part of the day to get it done. So I feel like uh, you gotta get one side done at a time and that way you can uh, say you accomplished something. So it's all blocked out. We put some edge primer on the bare metal cause this is gonna sit until I get everything ready cause I wanna prime it all at one time. So. It's etched, it's treated, it sits in here in the garage, nothing's gonna get on it, and I might even cover it up with a, uh, some plastic or a car cover, so I'm not worried about it getting rusty because there's no way it can, so. The door is slick sanded, and we'll be blocking that down and then priming that one so it's laser straight, so. Hope you guys like this one. And uh, we'll see you on the next video of next weekend, hopefully, if I got time next weekend, we'll get the other side done because the hood and the trunk are uh, barely needing any work done to them. So this is mainly the sides and then we'll be cutting it in. So hope you liked it. Give it a thumbs up and see you on the next video.